I've actually recorded this already, and I've decided that given today I received monetization on YouTube, and I decided to buy a nicer microphone, that I would go back and I'd give it a re-record with the new microphone. And uh, it sounds a million times better. There's also a pop filter, a bandsy arm. It's a quite a nice setup now. So, without further ado, The War of 1812. It's a bit of a weird one, and it absolutely did not need to happen. And especially in the way it did, the reasons the war actually occurred in the first place didn't exactly exist when the war itself was declared, which makes it even weirder. And throughout this upcoming series on the War of 1812, I'm going to be bullying President Madison quite a lot. This is down to one of those quirks of history why this war occurred at least. And it's something we often don't think about in the 21st century as Zoomers, and that's time. And I want to use the example of a family member of mine who died during the First World War. Now, his family in rural Queensland found out that he died in France at La Hamel in 1918, within a couple weeks. Nelson, on the other hand, yeah, the, the sailboat he won, well, it took a packet ship sailing from Spain to Britain, and then a horse running really fast to London to inform the Admiralty, which then had to send information out to newspapers uh, to then inform the people. So it's a bit harder, you could say, than swiping yes on every single girl you see on Tinder to try and get a match, and then quietly unmatching every single one of them because it's Tinder and the matches you have have more red flags than a Trotsky fanboy from an American college. Just don't with Tinder. You, you, you'll be happier without it. But see what I mean? Time. We forget communication used to take time. So the war of memes. And if you ask an American, and we all know that kind of American, the kind that will set a firework off in front of your house because you dared not to salute the flag, even though you're in a completely different country, and they do exist. I went to university with a bunch of exchange students from the States, and the 4th of July was honestly the worst day of the year. But they will tell you, the War of 1812 was effectively a second war of independence. The smelly lobsters got smashed, and Britain ruled the seas, but was finally defeated by America, and they won New Orleans, so my New Orleans, America number one, that's the only battle that matters, because they won New Orleans. If you ask a Brit, on the other hand, they'll look you dead in the face, ruffle up their feathers and go, what was 1812? I've never heard of that one. And there's a simple reason for that. For the Yanks, this war is everything, in many ways. It's, like I said, they call it a second revolution, which makes no sense whatsoever, because Britain didn't want to conquer America, but that's by the by. But for the Brits, it was a complete sideshow, and even the Duke of Wellington thought it was a sideshow and didn't want to commit forces to it, because the main problem for Britain at this point was Napoleon. And I'm sorry, Yanks, you did not win this war. But that's okay. You don't have to win every single war you're in. Your ego will survive. But we did have some cheeky moments in this war, and in particular at sea, where I want to just point out the US Navy, to its absolute credit, punched very highly above its weight, and against all odds, managed to pull a couple of rabbits out of the hat against quite a few British ships, namely Guerrier, Java, and Macedonian come to mind as the big ones. On the contrary, the US was not ambivalently god at sea. They did lose quite a few battles, and on the balance of it all, they lost more than they gained. Um, namely, the biggest losses would have, were the frigates that they lost, such as Chesapeake and Essex. But of course, many other vessels were involved in this war on both sides, and capturing was back and forth throughout the whole thing. So the frigates are the big ones, but it's worth remembering there are hundreds and hundreds of ships involved in this war. The greatest American victories during the war were at sea. And again, New Orleans doesn't count because the war was over when it happened. Again, time, the treaty was signed and the information saying the treaty had been signed did not actually reach the United States until after the Battle of New Orleans. So think of it as an epilogue, um, and I'll probably make an epilogue episode about this, about it after this series ends. Well, because honestly, Andrew Jackson deserves a lot of praise. I mean, whatever you think about him as president, he pulled an absolute rabbit out of the hat to win New Orleans uh, with his ragtag group of farmers against, well, some of the best British infantry. So, the, the absolute credit to Andrew Jackson for that one. But we're going to talk about things that actually happened during the War of 1812, which ended in 1815. Don't look at me, I didn't name it. Now, the war, beginning after President Madison had done his level best to just destroy the entire US military, started due to quite a few factors. Namely, US revolutionaries always wanted what we now call Canada. They considered a part of the United States, and 
for the British, it was called British North America at the time, but we'll call it Canada for simplification. And Britain also tended to consider the rebellious colonial subjects as still, well, rebellious colonial subjects, which meant that they would occasionally press gang them into their shipping crews, which kind of pissed the US off, particularly those Brits who joined the US and it was a reason for war. It's why the Chesapeake and Leopard Affair happened in the first place. Um, and it was part of the Cassis belly. These are the reasons Madison and his cabinet gave for starting the war, but it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, pressing had ended before the war started. Again, Madison didn't get the notice that pressing had ended until after he declared war, but he didn't backtrack at this point because he was already committed to it. And the fact that he declared war in the first place doesn't make a lick of sense, considering the fact that the US at the time well, they were dominating world trade. You know how everything's a Mayerska and Evergreen? This is the same thing at the time. Everything was a Yankee-flagged trading ship. And it was because they were neutral during the Napoleonic Wars. So they naturally dominated trade in the world. Imagine this, if you will. You're the US president. It's been not even 10 years since Trafalgar. You have maybe a dozen frigates max or frigate-sized vessels. And you declare war on the largest naval power that history has ever known. It doesn't really work in your brain, does it? Madison's an idiot. We're gonna, that's gonna be something we revisit quite a few times. The land war is pretty simple. The Yanks advance into Canada, do a little burning, and then get their ass handed to them and retreat over the border. British forces in 1814, after exiling Napoleon to Elba, for which he will never, ever, 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 ever return, maybe, land near Bladensburg, in, just outside of Washington, D.C., with a force of about 1,500 men. And they deal, as Howe put it, the greatest disgrace ever dealt to American arms at the Battle of Bladensburg, where 7,000 Americans flee to 1,500 Brits, and only and the Brits only lose 64 of their own number. And then they turn Washington, D.C. into a bonfire. The Yanks fared much better around the Great Lakes. And the Great Lakes, honestly, is just pure memes that I will get to. The war would end in a status quo with a last-minute American victory after the Treaty of Ghent was signed, that being New Orleans. So the goal in this, in this war for the Yanks was to take Canada and kick the Brits totally out of North America. They proceeded to get totally beaten back by maple syrup chugging militiamen and their native allies and were counter-invaded and had their capital burned, winning a battle after the war ended. I'm sorry, Yanks, you did not win this one. There's no way you can spin it, you didn't win. And counter to Yankee propaganda at the time, Britain did not want to conquer America again. They just wanted the war to end because it was a sideshow. It was sapping resources from the real fight, which was Napoleon. Because I'm sorry, no matter how much the British and the Americans fight, the French are the ultimate enemy of the Anglo. Well, up until 1815, and then it becomes the Russians, but that's a whole other thing. So, failing the invasion, winning a couple naval skirmishes, losing a fair few naval battles, having the capital torch and winning a battle after the war ends does not equal a victory, to sum it all up. I'm interested in doing a series about individual battles uh, from this war, and the Great Lakes whole building boats within an eye shot of each other, slowly making the boats bigger and bigger and bigger, where you start with a rowboat with a cannon strapped to an end with a hundred guns shipped a line. So that's going to definitely be a video, so we'll get into that. But first, uh, we're going to talk about the Essex and the Phoebe, and essentially shitposting 101 at sea back in 1814. Essentially, imagine tweeting uh, insults at each other from across a harbour. That's exactly what Porter and Hillier did to each other. On that, I hope the audio is a lot better, um, and I hope you do enjoy it now. Um, I'm going to attempt to put a lot of effort into this over the next six months. To be completely honest, uh, I have a major career change being thrust upon me in about eight or nine months time so i'm going to give this my all if i can make it work i can make it work but at the end of the day i'm having fun this is a new hobby for me and uh, hopefully the audio is a lot better i want to thank every single one of you who has shown up i genuinely did not think that a 20 minute shit post that i made about the russian navy being crap would take off as much as it did and i will probably re-record that to an extent or maybe make it into a series too. But with this series, I'm envisioning about four or five parts, but I want to leave it open-ended because a lot of things happened. Please do like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you want to see next. Tell me what kind of interests you have in particular parts of history. And if we match up, I'll make something on it. My two main areas of study is the War of 1812 and the Napoleonic sailing period, and also the late Soviet Union and post-Soviet states. I do have a another major that I'm working on at the moment at university in ancient history. And I do am somewhat interested in ancient history, but it's more the fact that I needed something other than just a major in modern history for me to actually graduate. So modern history is my jam. 
So uh, that that's all, and I will see you in the funnies with Essex versus Phoebe in the next 1812 video, but probably in the next video on this channel. I think it's Chernobyl. Maybe. We'll see.